You're listening to Bridges Radio Program. This is a show about the creative industries, artists of all mediums, and other professionals who make the art we all enjoy. Bridges is produced at Citadel House Studios in Lewisport, Newfoundland and Labrador, and is a collaborative project between Carolyn R. Parsons and Citadel House. This program can be found on iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio, Spotify, and in podcasts at SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts, as well as many other podcast hosting programs. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 20 of Bridges Radio, Bridges Radio Podcast. Um, It is February 1st. Um, We're already into the second month of 2019. That is crazy. Um, My name is Bonnie Stairs, and I'm here with Carolyn, and how are you today? I am good, and until you said it, I was completely oblivious that this was February 1st, and I'm like, what? It's just gone by. I know. (laughs) It just started, and we're already this far through. It's unbelievable. That's right. We don't have a lot of time, you and I, to chat today because, well, we'll tell everybody that after, but... uh, we're going to be very short with our remarks because we have more important remarks coming up. So, yeah, we have a really important guest this afternoon, evening. <laughs> so, yeah. So, anyway, um, how you been? I'm grand, doing grand. It's uh, yeah, years flying by. It's crazy busy, flat out all the time. But it's good, good busy. How about you? You got some stuff happening. I got all kinds of stuff happening, all kinds of good stuff. Well, the book has a release date. The cover's been revealed. Uh, We have the launch booked in St. John's, and we're doing the launch here. We're going to do a central Newfoundland launch as well. So all that is coming up, and I'm so excited. It's amazing. I saw your cover there online this morning. Um, Yeah, I've seen it, I guess, for a couple weeks now, but it's so good. It's so beautiful. So it's very eye-catching, which is great. It's eye-catching. It's on trend, apparently silhouettes. It's a silhouette. Uh, and that's apparently a new thing that I don't know. I don't know. I don't follow the trends of book covers, but apparently it is. <laughs> um, and it really represents kind of the character Betsy. The book is called The Forbidden Dreams of Betsy Elliott and really follows mm-hmm. the journey of Betsy. And although there's some other really cool characters in there. And Betsy uh, is a bit of a mystery. And I really like that yeah. you don't get to have preconceived notions about her. It is historical fiction, but the the uh, messages and the themes of it are transcend time, right? It's There are struggles that women face that, uh, you know, Betsy has qualities about her that aren't necessarily... Um, what women should have. She tries to be uh, socially, <laughs> uh, she puts on a piece, mm. let's put it that way, but she has bigger plans and she has ambitions and she's uh, atypical. And she takes it to, uh, you know, uh, a bit too far at times. And so, but yet she's likable and interesting and you root for her. So I'm really interested, uh, you know, I really thought the, the cover uh, was, um, you know, sort of set that up uh it's interesting Mm -hmm. like she is and it's mysterious like she is and uh the only way to find out about betsy is on the page and so um you don't know what she looks like you don't uh, you can't tell that and and you just have this idea that there's so um, it's a really cool cover and um i forget the cover designer's name but it's the flanker press you know graphic design team so they have some good uh, people working for them and it was completely their concept i had no idea what i wanted for a cover and, and just uh they really pulled through something if beautiful I had hated it if i had hated if they had thrown me something that i really hated i'm fairly certain they would have listened but um they've been absolutely fantastic and i loved it from the start um and um so yeah here we go and the book comes out the release date is february 13th uh so we're talking two weeks less than and uh, yeah yep and so now that's the release date but it takes a while before it gets i try to tell people that's not magic it's not like you wake up february 13th and bam it's on every shelf uh you know yeah we're we're a regional press uh flankers a regional uh press so um 
it will be available in selected areas then and uh, probably the Flanker Press website. And then after that, you know, it'll start to be in the stores. But they told me, they reassured me that within two weeks after that, it's pretty much um, in the places it's mainly going to be. And uh, if it's not in a bookstore near you, call your bookstore and ask them to get it in because uh, uh, that's a lot of what works, you know, is uh, people requesting it. The bookstores will get it in. Mm -hmm. uh, but they tell me. And your library, too. Request yeah, your library the if there's a book that you want. Well, yeah, the libraries are really great. They order, they have a Newfoundland collection. And they have a person in charge of the Newfoundland collection. So whenever a Newfoundland book is published, you know, um, they will buy it and have it available for readers. So the Newfoundland mm -hmm. libraries will purchase um, copies of that. But, you know, to make sure that happens in a timely manner, uh, call your library. So yeah. have it. You know, if you're, you're a person who uses um, uh, library for your reading, which is... Mm -hmm. I use every way. I use the library. I do a lot of the e-books now on the li from the library, audio books from the library. Um, actual books, not so much, even though I live next door to the library. Um, but, um, <laughs> I do, what a resource I, you have. Yeah, well, I ordered some. Like, I ordered them, and because not always the book that I want is here, right? So I have to order it in, and it comes mm -hmm. local. And then I go get it, and I have a couple of weeks to read it, which forces me to read because... Um, as much as I love reading, sometimes it's, it gets put off. So when you have a two week, yeah, you just do it. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> I did. And you guys, well, stuff, you're getting back on track at Citadel House. Yeah, we're having a couple shows this month. On February 9th, we have Dave Penny, and on February 16th, we have Waterfront Fire. Um, Dave Penny was just here for a time at the old hall and from stage to stage for Christmas time. So if you were here for that, he was, or if you saw any of those productions across the island, he was part of that and as well uh water from fire was here a couple years ago but they're a progressive kind of um rock group they i believe there's five of them they're very much up and coming in the music scene in newfoundland and on the east coast of canada so they're going to be a really rocking show and jordan coper their vocalist is unbelievable i will say that he is something to watch he's incredible so i would be here for that I'm, one it'll be I'm great fairly certain I'm, i i can't ever be sure uh, once the book no, is, but I'm yeah, be doing launches, but it's it's all coming sort of after that. So I'm really trying to going to try to get to both those shows. Um, I and fingers crossed that I can um, because I have yeah. either of them, and I've heard amazing things about both. And I missed the show in Christmas. S that you know, so I missed that. So I really kind of want to. I was sick when Sherman and that show Sherman Downey was involved with that. Uh, Christmas, yeah, night, and I really wanted to, and I wasn't feeling well that night. It was like a big bummer. So <laughs> I need to make it up. You have to catch them. Hopefully, hopefully, I understand you're going to be flat out with the book, which is a really yeah. good sort of flat out. So <laughs> it really starts with the. It's launch. understandable. Is the launch on the twenty seventh is when my work really starts. So I, I do have a bit of window of time in there, but of course that means I have to get all my other work out of the way, right? So that I could just yeah, because that'll be a weekend. I'll do the launch, and then I'll stay in St. John's and do some signings. Then I come back, and then we're doing the launch at Citadel House on the Friday night, the eighth of March. And so I and I have to, I don't have to do like it's really nice to have a, a publisher who takes on a lot of the marketing and promotion. But out here in Central, mm -hmm. in particular, I really want to uh, make sure that people are aware of it and uh, come out to the launch, and because I just want to see everybody and. And we're just going to have, you know, a uh, short reading. And I'm going to get a cake. I want to get a cake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I love There's cake for cake. every occasion, and this is an occasion for cake. Well, I'm thinking I'll for get sure. a cover of the book on a cake or something. And, you know, everybody can eat my words. But, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so, yeah. That's pretty clever. Stuff coming up, and uh, we don't have a lot of time. Um, and so our next guest. We have a guest who I talked to for about an hour and 15 minutes. So, and, and we're going to share the entire interview because of who it is and what he had to say. Are you excited about this next guest, Bonnie? <laughs> I'm so excited. Okay, so can I say, can I say who it is? Okay, so our guest is Kevin Blackmore from Buddy What's His Name and the Other Fellas. And um, he was somebody who I grew up basically grew up listening to it. I'm sure so many people in this province did too, not only their music, but also their comedy routines. I remember um, 
as like being very, very young. We do a Saturday afternoon cleaning of the house and we put on music and stuff on the CD player, like a rotating disc CD player. We had a buddy, what's his name? And the other fellers disc in. And so I remember listening to him talking about, I believe there was a story about a skidoo. Oh, gosh, yeah. Uh, or like ice the fishing gammy? or something like that. The <laughs> gammy. That's exactly the one. So I remember that distinctly from my childhood, uh, listening to that while cleaning the house. So it was really exciting to have him on this show. And Carolyn had a good chat about everything, I think. We so had <laughs> we had a laugh. Um, the thing about Kevin is, you know, a lot of people remember, uh, certainly those are the things you remember, right? You remember because he's, he's so funny. Like, he's a comic genius. And so I've watched these things so many times that you sort of, that's what you associate, right? But, um, yeah. you know, there's nobody is one thing, you know, and so we had a yeah. conversation, and and I've never talked to him, in, you know, in in depth, which is what I love about the, doing this podcast is that we're not limited by time as much, and we can let people talk and 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 really. But what he he talked about uh, a lot was the business of being in the arts and working in the creative industry and how it is a business and the things that they did. And I mean, when I finished, I thought this, and I said this to uh, Dean Stairs from Citadel House, um, who, you know, manages artists and has the record company. I said to them, it should be just mandatory listening for anybody who ever wants to work in the creative arts. I just really think that it has such value. And I was listening like, you know, I agree with a lot of things, but when it and I've said it, but when it comes to someone who has had the degree of success that they've had with Buddy Wes's name and the other fellows, there's a, a, a weight to that, right? You know, there's a, there's mm-hmm. a certain, you know, if they say it, believe it, you know, because it's the difference between me telling you financial advice and a financial advisor telling you financial advice. <laughs> It's, exactly. It's, they they know the industry inside. They're seasoned pros for thirty years, and they were so successful at it. They were, you know, they they were working and they had day jobs and transitioned into full time entertainers and traveled and toured and were just so incredibly successful at doing uh, the art that they did. And we talked a lot about, you know, um, what makes it commercially viable like what is it that people want to hear and my own thing I've always I always say this is there's a code to it right there, you got to crack the code which is a balance between what you want to be doing as an artist what the audience wants to hear as an audience and, and a, a large number of audience you know people what appeals to them to the masses of course you, you know you get a big audience and um, you know just doing the work, right? Doing the work. Yeah, yeah. So um, there's a balance there. And uh, once you find where that fits, and he uses other artists as examples of people doing exactly that, like their success comes from uh, finding, or like, as I say, cracking that code, right? Finding that. Yeah, finding their niche and right. what they're able to because do. You don't want to be, okay, so, so it's great. So the audience wants all this, you know, they want this kind of book and I could start writing that kind of book and start selling them and making all kinds of money. But if I want to be writing that kind of book, I'm not going to be so happy and maybe I'm going to burn out and not want to do that. So there is a balance. I mean, you have to take your own artistic, um, you know, what you want to do into account, but you have to know exactly the point at where it's just right for an audience. Uh, Is it too much of that or is it too little of that? Like, you have to find that balance. Like I look at this book now. Well, this is my fifth book, but it's my first novel. That's first of all, it's my first historic novel, which is kind of what I, I like writing history um, novels. I love, love, love the research, um, and so I do the research, but I write the story around stuff. Events aren't as important as the people in them, and I love that. So I want to do that, um, you know, but I have to make sure that it's. Uh, something that appeals to a large number. I'm not going to, you know, um, be able to do it. I need to make money. It's a, it's a business as well. So, um, mm-hmm. and then, you know, you have to manage the business end of it too.